I'd like to welcome Dr. Fullerton, Professor of Economics at the University of Texas at El Paso to our discussion about economics and why it can be for you. Um, first, I would like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Fullerton. Thank you, Cynthia. I'm glad to participate. Um, my name's Tom Fullerton. Uh, my parents are originally from Fort Smith, Arkansas. But um, let's see, I only spent elementary, my elementary school years in Arkansas. After that, my middle school years were spent in um, half of them in Bogota, Colombia, the other half in Barranquilla, Colombia, which used to nobody knew about, but now lots of people know about it because it's the hometown of, of um, Shakira. Uh, then I spent my high school years in San Salvador, El Salvador. After I graduated from high school, I drove up to Texas, had to drive through Guatemala and Mexico, but drove up to Texas so I could come to college here at UTEP. Uh, after I um, graduated from UTEP, I worked as an associate economist in the corporate planning department at El Paso Electric. Then I went to get a master's degree in economics at Iowa State University. After that, I worked as a staff economist for the governor of Idaho in Boise. After that, I did some more graduate school work at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Then I went to work for Wharton Econometrics in Philadelphia, where I was in charge of modeling, forecasting, and policy analysis for Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Then I accepted a job at the University of Florida, and while I was at the University of Florida, I completed a doctorate in economics. And after that, I accepted a, 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 what is called a tenure track position here at the University of Texas at El Paso. And I made the mistake of drinking water out of Lake Azcarate, and now I can't leave El Paso, and I've been here ever since. Wow, that's an incredible journey. Um, what are the special challenges that you faced in, uh, in your journey to, uh, to becoming an economist? Well, since my parents lived in South America while I was going to, to college, um, you know, that was see, somewhat of a challenge because I was here, um, you know, on my own, essentially. I had a good support or a good safety net in place, but, you know, I was on my own, and so I couldn't um, talk to, to my parents and ask them questions and clarify things the way that most people could. Uh, back in those days, uh, let's see, Zoom didn't exist. The email didn't exist and cell phones didn't exist. And so uh, I only had intermittent contact with my parents, maybe get a letter once a month, and then once a semester, talk to them on the telephone. Sometimes I would go an entire semester without talking to them on, on a telephone. So, you know, that was, uh, that definitely set me apart here on this campus where most of my classmates still lived at home or their parents still lived in El Paso, even if they had moved out to the dormitories or to, to an apartment. Uh, you know, college studies in general, let's see, are going to be difficult. And, you know, I, I was no different than anybody else. I had to, to be careful to, to make sure to stay on top of things. What I did discover in terms of uh, successful college students versus students that um, uh, were less successful or might or eventually didn't even uh, complete their degrees was that the successful students tended to be the ones that, that first of all, attended class. Second of all, they took notes in those classes. Third of all, they either did all their homework assignments or in classes that did not have homework assignments, they studied the material they were going over independently of what was going on in class. And let's see, fourth, they studied in advance of when the exams were going to take place. So they're always fairly well prepared, even during those weeks where they had multiple assignments and multiple exams all all coinciding with each other. So, you know, there were, they didn't run into disasters, even if they had disastrous schedules facing them. So if you follow those four, those four steps, most of you are going to be very successful in college. And it sounds like these rules apply to early college high school students, traditional students, non-traditional students, any, any student who is interested in pursuing a college degree following those steps will lead to success. Is that what I'm yeah. hearing? Yes, that is correct. College is the great equalizer. 
And no matter what background let's see, you, you have personally, if you follow those four steps, you're going to be successful. You could come from a very privileged background. And if you don't follow those four steps, you're not going to be very successful in college. In fact, I saw plenty of people came from very privileged backgrounds and ended up dropping out of college because they weren't following those steps. They were in college for the wrong reasons. Very good advice. I do have one more question for you. What was the moment or how did you decide that economics is what you wanted to study? What was that aha moment for you? Well, in, in my case, when I was in high school, I was a fairly good student, but I was good at, at almost all my classes and I really didn't know what to study. And my dad was the one that suggested I study economics. And this was fortuitous because I didn't even know what economics was. And I asked him, what is economics? He said, well, it's, it's like a combination of social studies and math. And so if you, if you enjoy social studies and you're good at math, you've got probably without knowing it, a very good aptitude for economics. So when I, when I arrived in college, I started taking economics classes and I found out that the topics we were studying were very interesting to me. And so the more I found out about the field, the more interesting it was. And then I found out that maybe economics wasn't recruited as heavily as other majors were, but if you worked very hard and you attacked the labor market in a very organized manner, uh, let's see, employers definitely liked hiring economics students because they're very good at thinking analytically. And analytical thinking skills are important in just about any type of organization where you want to launch a professional career. So true. Well, Dr. Fullerton, thank you for spending these, uh, this time with us. And hopefully uh, your words will inspire some of our students to continue in their economics classes and to pursue a degree at UTEP or another institution of higher learning. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to do it. And I'd just like to say that El Paso Community College is a great place to start. Thank you very much.